TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me. You see it. Warning. I don't know what's going to go on in this video, but YouTube, you can entrust that uh, there will be minimum cursing in the first five minutes. And anything that needs to be blurred will be blurred out. And all the gu community guidelines and things of that nature will be followed. Thank you. Uh, don't forget twitch.com. The username is right at the bottom of the screen, man. Lock in with us over there, man. We do got merch and we also got um, Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. <sighs> this is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 4, Episode 18. Talk. Me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. We ready. Recent research reveals that nearly 40% of under 25 year olds do not have a plan in place to repay money they currently owe. Average debt for the under 25s has more than tripled in the last 10 years and now stands at over £12,000. Last year, nearly 2 million young people under the age of 25 fell into financial difficulty. Okay. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are High Court enforcement agents. They travel all over the north of England, repossessing property and collecting debt. I'll tell you what, mate, some big houses down here, aren't there? It's a huge house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, they're in one of the wealthiest suburbs of Manchester. Oh, Manchester. Uh, to Wait, collect three thousand pounds owed to a lettings company by Mr. Quasim oh, Ahmed. Sure. You're treating me to one of your fabulous revisits, aren't you? I'm treating you to a lovely house in Altrincham. This isn't the first time Vic has tried to recover the debt. Gates open, mate. Straight in. Now this is the right episode. We did settings. Why is it 360p? God, look. All right. Hopefully, it's him. On his previous visit, over a month ago, Quasim agreed to a payment plan. But he's defaulted, and now Vic is back with Stuart to recover payment in full or seize goods if Quasim can't or won't pay. The outstanding is 3,004. Yeah. Personally, I get quite excited when we get to a nice area because uh, there's not many more possessions we can take control of if they don't want to make a payment. Good morning, you okay? My name's Mr McCrack and this is Mr Victor, we're High Court Enforcement Agents. We're after Mr Quasi Mahmed. Uh, yeah. Is he available? Yeah. Right, no probs. Under the terms of the writ, the team has the right to gain ah. peaceful entry into the property. So the moment they could, they walked in, that's the... Stuart makes the most of the open doors. Quasi, can you come in, please? Hello there. Is it Quasim? Yeah. Quasim, good morning. Uh, now you can't lie and say it's not you or anything. You locked in. Good morning, my name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. This is my colleague, Mr. Victor. We're here to collect £3,004. If not, we'll be removing goods, sir. Well, uh, as simple as that, sir. It's black and white as that, I'm afraid. I've been here before, you see. You, you've had a chance to sort it out, sir, and you haven't. This is my house. house. But you're living here, sir. No, I'm staying. Staying, you're staying here, right? Well, at the moment, so like I said, the writ is at this address. Kozim is listed on the electoral roll at the address and was living at the house when Vic visited the first time. As yeah. there is no proof, this... It's been a solid 30 days, buddy. The jig is up. Whatever you say, cap. ...isn't his home. 
the agents have the right to stay and enforce the writ. Let me speak to my lawyer first. Yeah, of course, no problem. Can you step over there? No, we'll wait here. We'll be staying here at the moment. Who let them in? I didn't let them in. I jumped in the door. Am I it's like vampires, man. Once you open the door and they, they you, well, I think with a vampire you gotta allow them in or something. I don't know. I really believe in that, but I'm just saying. I need to go for an appointment, but your van's blocking my car. I'll move the van, mate. One sec. As Stuart goes outside to let the young woman leave, Cuisine takes action of his own and locks Stuart out. But the other oh, partner's in there. He's allowed back in. Because I'm inside, so it's a false imprisonment, sir. Let him in, he's knocking on the door. Let him in. I'll let you in in a minute, Stuart. It's trying to be funny games here, mate. Alright. Do you want to let him in, mate? I want to let him in my lawyer first. Okay. Let my colleague back in the house. Listen, can I have... Call the police. With Quasim distracted on the phone, Vic lets Stuart back into the house. Oh. Who, who's this? My sister. Is it useless, sister? Hello? It's not fun to solve nothing. You hear how, uh, you hear how bro answered the phone? Hello? Like, he don't care. <laughs> Hi, man. Good morning, sir. You're okay. Good morning, yeah, not bad. We just, just on this one, just to let you know, we made an application to have the judgment set aside. Okay. Uh, uh, At yeah. this moment, sir. Okay, that's it. That is only an application. The writ itself is still active as we speak at the moment. So we'll still be asking for a, a payment of 3000 and four pounds and eighteen pence. Could you not give it a few days? Just no, we can't. Oh, it's, it's an act of high court writ, sir. Right. Nah, he can't get no leeway because he's been here thirty days ago. The moment they left is when they should have put it in that application. You know what I'm saying? The first time. Okay, touch about the two point man. Quasim might be appealing his case, but the writ is still active, and Stewart is duty bound to continue enforcement. Yeah, he's duty bound. Yeah, you can't do nothing about that. Sort some things out here. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, like, you know, you've had time, sir. Have you just got three grand lying around, just for jokes. Let me sort some stuff out. Yeah, right. Stewart and Vic play the waiting game and give Quasim more time to raise the funds. Stuart begins an inventory of assets in the house. Yeah, Stuart. If Quasim can't raise payment in... Stuart will pull out that pen and paper. Boy. Boom. The agents can remove any items that belong to him. Have you got your phone on you? Uh, so I'm going to use this for photos. He still wasn't making a payment. So we still have to apply the pressure. People seem to think that dirt follows just people who are poor, who are financially struggling that have got nothing, but it's far from it. Big houses, small houses, that can follow you anywhere. Cuisine still... The rich get it the hardest because they think that, you know what I'm saying? Some of them think, not all of them, some of them think that, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have to do anything. It's like that, that entitlement of, I don't got to pay you back. Like, and bro in here taking pictures like he is the cleanest runway fashion photo photographer. Look at how, look at this. From it. Big houses, small houses, that can follow you anywhere. Cuisine <laughs> still hasn't made. <laughs> That's mean finger work. That thumb is going crazy. Give the agents right? an offer. Pay me in full. Because we're wasting each other's time here. Physically, don't have the money for well, the After more than an hour in the house, Stuart's patience has run out. There you go. As a last resort, he starts to move goods into the hallway. Yeah, in the TV. hope that this strategy will prompt Cuisine to finally settle his debt. But then, Cuisine's father arrives home. He's about to go up. Well, hello? What you doing here? Oh, sir. What's up, sorry, sir? Are you father? Right. Oh, how how you how you say he fucking that's his boss? Yeah, no, I understand. That's not his house. Okay. We need my son's other house. At the moment, we haven't seen any evidence to say that it doesn't belong to him. What, so what evidence do you need? I, I sent you evidence that, that that's the fucking that's my son's house. We need a sales receipt, sir. Which sales receipt? Yeah. Which sales receipt? He's already, sorry. It belongs to my son. Don't, don't right. really touch anything. Okay. okay, just calm down, sir. He needs to make a payment. That's his problem. Okay. He just called me. That's his problem. Can you talk to him and ask him if he can make payments? No. Quasim's father has phoned the police. Yeah, that, that's... <laughs> Calling the police is going to be the highest level of embarrassment because they're going to come in and side directly with the highest court in the land. You know what I'm saying? 
But, you know, a lot of people don't know, I guess. My house, they, they, they just come by force to my house. That's belong to my son. He's not really living here. Been over this now since we've been here. So the basic thing is make a payment, sir. Why the fuck can move the bird? That's not belong to him. Then you just come here and tell them. What started as a routine job has turned into a volatile situation. It's always pops, man. It's always pops coming and firing stuff up, man. Get it, head of the house, gotta protect. Situation. Natural with Kwasin still not offering to pay, will Stuart and Vic be able to resolve this case peacefully? It's a huge house, it's crazy. Hi. The front gate is elegant, ain't it? Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor were in Altrincham, Cheshire. No offense, we don't need a recap, buddy. To re arrived, resolve the situation. Yeah, you just come here. Every right to be in the house. Okay. They're not going to tell me anything. They're not going to tell them anything, Dad. Dad, I'm going to have to pay them. They're going to take the goods. They please can't do anything. Now, Vic has to explain that if Kwasim can't provide proof none of the goods in the house belong to him, they could be... Damn, police ain't even come through in Manchester. They was like, bro, listen... We'll talk to you on the phone. We're not going to waste manpower. This is Gunchester. Sorry. Removed. Okay, thank you. Bye, bye. Okay, can I explain something to you, sir? Police you calm down. I've dealt with you before, right? If he pays today, it's the end of the matter. Yeah, but... Let me finish. That's his problem, isn't it? Well, I'm dealing with him. What they're saying to you is that what happens is it doesn't matter whose their goods are. It's not your name. They can't move it. Yeah, but sir, you got to prove it. Last chance, mate. Talk to me. Yes or no? No. No. You might, you're not making payment today? All right. I'll find transport, mate. And I'm not going to waste my time here. And he will remember. He said, last chance, mate. Looked at the dude, the claimant or whatever. He looked at his dad like, can you please just pay? Dad was like, Psh. Now, sir, sir, I will have you arrested. Do you want me to call 999? No, why, 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 I'm trying to explain to you the same situation. So is your son. You're the only one not understanding it. No. You see, quite often that parents are so embarrassed by the way the son or daughter has dealt with their, their debt, they become quite aggressive. I don't think they're aggressive people. I think it's just out of yeah, rage and pure embarrassment business. that they've let their son get to this stage. With no sign of an offer of payment, Stuart goes upstairs to continue the inventory of goods. Mm, that's just going to irate him even more going upstairs. I can't. Dad, don't Dad. nobody upstairs. No. Oh, don't. Sir, 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 sir. Just come here. Come back no, here. No, 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 okay, just give me your bank details. Yeah? Go back. They just go back. So. Until the police is... I mean, not Brian. Look at what's his name. Uh, uh, what's his name? God, Lee. We were four seasons in and I can't remember bro's name. Bro is chilling on a heater. No, this fucking go back. This be me when life is crumbling around me. <laughs> this is a perfect meme when life is crumbling around you. Just chilling. Okay, go back. Just go back. I'm gonna make the payment. I'm gonna make it. I'm sorry. Just go back. Just go down. Whole time, buddy got the payment, but playing in his dad house. Just go back. Come here. Come with me. Come. Let's do this payment now. All right. Go down, Chris. Despite Quasim's offer to pay, his father isn't calming down. Let them do what they want to do. Take the goods. Just go and ring the police again. Dad, yes. please, I'm going to do it. You're the aggressor now. You're the no. one shouting, yes, Dad. I'm going to pay the money from the company. I will sort it out. I promise you, Dad. Please just stop getting angry. Please, Dad. I know that you're angry at me right now, but please stop getting angry because you're going to hurt yourself. Can we just, can we just go yeah, in there, yeah, please? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, that's all you're going to do is hurt yourself. No okay, Dad, just go sit over there. It's fine. I'll sort it out. Pay the money back. I'll do everything I can, but please, Dad. With his father off the scene, Kwasim is now ready to make a payment. I'm so no, sorry. No, don't go for it. So, no, no, no. As, as, just regardless of yeah. the situation at first, I'd just like to apologize because as, as a person, as a Muslim, that's not how it's no, meant to it's be. Okay, mate. Really sorry. We're not, we're not here to. Okay. Let's just get it sorted. Yeah, let's get it sorted, right? Um, let me just pay you the money. Yeah. 
Right, blood pressure going crazy. It's gone in, all right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Shortest. After a tense couple of hours, Stuart and Vic finally recover payment in full. <laughs> got a full payment, though. All they got to do is, uh, you know what I'm saying, hook back up their little TV, tell Dad to calm down, you know what I'm saying, and we, we, we good. Let's go. Angry, isn't he? We needed his father. His father was the prompt for payment on that. What annoys me, mate, is he had the money the whole time. Right. Yeah, On average, UK couples spend more than £44,000 when they divorce or separate. It takes nearly a year for financial issues to be settled, with many ex-partners taking each other to court. <clears throat> One in four adults have fallen into debt. As a direct result of a breakup. Mm. That's tough when you're depending on your other, the other, the other half of your relationship to hold you up. This is never about love. Mm. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in Faversham, Kent to collect a large debt owed by a businessman. Today, we have a writ of control against a Mr. Hawkins, Mr. Paul Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins used to own two companies with his former partner, Alison. She claims that she remortgaged her house to invest money in the businesses. When the relationship ended, a judge ruled that Mr. Hawkins must pay back all the money she'd invested. But that is insane. Go back. She remortgaged her house to... Mr. Paul Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins used to own two companies with his former partner, Alison. She claims that she remortgaged her house to invest money in the businesses. When the relationship ended, a judge ruled that Mr. Hawkins must pay back all the money she'd invested. But Alison claims that he failed to keep up the repayments. That's insane. I almost want to side with her, though. Like, uh, you know, I remortgaged the crib so you can... To invest money back into the businesses and, and then we broke man, I need that back. But at the same time, y'all was together. That's a risk you took from the heart. You did that out of love. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's this is a tough one. But knowing me, I would I would want my you know what I'm saying? I would want that back too. No cap. So the case has been escalated to the high court. And Mr. Hawkins must pay the forty-five thousand pounds that he owes her. Oh, it's forty-five bands. Oh yeah, I need that back. It ain't nothing hard about that. Give me that back today. Business still booming too. Need yeah. them back. I'm looking for it now. It's a YF plate or something, isn't it? It's a silver one. Allison has told the agents her ex-partner owns an expensive car. Yep. It ain't forty-five thousand dollars. Got it. See, it's in the corner. The estate. The agents block the asset in. Put a if Mr. Put Hawkins a can't or won't pay the £45,000 he owes, They'll take it his away. car could be seized to help pay off the debt. The agents have come to the security company they believe he currently owns. Oh, he Howfield owns. Response, which he set up without his ex-partner. Are you Miss Hawkins? Uh, my name is Paul Bowhill. Can I speak to you in privacy? Come on, Paul. We have a writ here. Maybe you need to step outside. Yeah, perhaps I do, because it's a work environment. <clears throat> the writ is for 45,000, I'm sure you know. Yeah, I'm personally going bankrupt on Thursday. It still doesn't stop the enforcement action. We're told that the silver BMW in the corner belongs to you, yeah. personally. That is now under seizure. Right. Is there any po When it rains, it pours, man. You personally going bankrupt, can't have no businesses in your name, this, this, and the third, and everything that comes with that, and you about to lose your car, too? Possibility that this money could be paid. My ex knows Timing. I can't pay 45,000 quid. 
despite her keeping the house and just about everything else. No, not, no chance. She knows that. Mr. Hawkins' car is worth £6,000, a fraction of the £45,000 debt they came for. So Paul needs to look for any of the goods he can seize, including assets from his security business. But the woman in the office has some unexpected news. Who are you? I'm the director of this company. Okay, so I've tried. I mean, I understand your hostility, but I'm here to try and resolve this. The woman is Mr. Hawkins' sister, Jackie. She claims she now owns the company, Howfield Response, and all its assets. But well, yeah, because he's going bankrupt, so he can't be in his name. So hopefully he transferred it all correctly, but we'll see. Paul needs proof. Okay, so there should be an asset register first and foremost, probably. But the second and most important thing is there'll be a bill of sale for the business or a bill of sale for the assets. While Jackie starts to look for documents to prove she now owns the business and all its assets, Steve heads out to the BMW with Mr. Hawkins to clear it before it's taken away. Dang. That's a man with no hope. He gave that BMW up real quick. It's only worth, what, six grams? But that's a start. Hey. Done everywhere. Door panels, packs of seats, central console. Mr. Hawkins claims that it's him and not his ex-partner who's been left out of pocket since they split up. We were together. Of, of course. Of course, sir. Do you not understand how marriage works? There's no reason for us to be married. We do this for a woman that we love. Of course. It's a crazy investment that's super one-sided. Not to say that I don't want to be married one day, but it, it you, you be realistic. When it's time to break up, if things go sour, if you didn't sign the right paperwork, 50% of everything that you own, <laughs> sayonara. Your kids, sayonara. With limited visibility. Some of y'all like that. Some of y'all dudes out there would like that. Me, personally, not me. But, like, No. This ain't, this ain't set up for you to win at the end of the day and be prosperous afterwards, buddy. For 10 years, we're engaged. You know, she's sitting in a house that I basically did 99% of the work for over a 10 year period. And now I'm left with nothing. And she still wants to have something off my table that I haven't got. I Three left now. that house Three with now. a bed, nothing else but a bed and my Xbox. Life is pretty wrong and pretty crap. When it's a bitter dispute, you can't take. You left with a bed and an Xbox. I ain't gonna lie though, you had the foundation for a great new setup. All you need is that game and somewhere to sleep, my boy. Besides, because you don't know who is actually to blame. You've only got two sides of a story. You can guess. But, you don't. but and, and to add on to what I just said, I will say this: like, if a woman has sacrificed her career and everything else for her kids, that you've had if, now, if kids are involved, keep in mind now, if a woman has sacrificed her career, put everything on hold, just be at home, pause their life, and can't really jump back into the workforce like that, as she should, <laughs> as she should take, you know what I'm saying? Take reasonably amount of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But 100% of everything is cuffed, but like a, a reasonable. Because that, that was the sacrifice she gave up. And we can argue if it was a sacrifice or not, because nine times out of ten, women want to get married more than men. We cool with just having a, 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 a an agreement. <laughs> What's it called? Where, where you with somebody from more than ten years and not married? You... you you good in the land of the law or something? I don't know. I actually don't know the honest truth. Back in the office, it's, Jackie has shown her enough there. evidence to prove she now owns the company. But she's struggling to provide paperwork to show that she now owns the assets in the company too. Yeah, that's different. Without the appropriate backup paperwork, we could theoretically take everything out of the office that is got any value at all and it would shut you down you ain't got it's no money in the potentially bank? a total disaster it seems that the assets in the company 
have not yet been legally transferred to Mr. Hawkins' sister, Jackie. We haven't got it. We haven't got the money. We haven't got the proper bit of paper. We were just trying to make a living in life and trying to move on. Civil partnership. So yeah, there we what go. What do you need to do? Well, we need to ring our office and potentially to get a removal contractor in to take the stuff away. With well, the future really... of his business at serious risk, Mr. Hawkins tries to raise some funds. You're not going to get 45. Since splitting up with Alison, he has married and his new father-in-law offers to pay £10,000 towards the debt. Oh my God, W father-in-law. 10000 that's a that's 16 with the car. So if you take the car at six grand, and 10 grand, that's 16 grand. 10 grand doesn't, I don't think they're gonna go for that. Yes, you? they will. Come on, hey, Paul, stop it. 16 is a lot, man. In my opinion. Can they say to her, you're gonna you're gonna basically put four other people out of work? They won't listen to that, Paul. Mr. Hawkins' offer of ten thousand pounds, together with his car, is only a third of the forty-five thousand pound debt. Paul keeps the pressure. But a third, right up front. I ain't gonna lie. I'll be like, all right, cool. Figure it out. You got a few months. <laughs> I'll throw what a ball in the air here. If you were to say half the bill. It's just not there. If it was just me, I'd say, well, fuck her, take it then, I'll go and climb a dump. I can't, I can't believe that she's, she has gone this far with it. I don't want to. And listen, I don't know how I'd look, but like from the outside looking in with no knowledge, I would say she might be a little bit bitter. You done already remarried and everything. She ain't happy about that. Oh, you happy again? Oh, okay. Snatch, give me everything. Simple. Give her a fucking penny if in six months down the right we can't roast, roast it, it just all collapses because we've if you don't if, if you don't make an acceptable offer to them today, it'll collapse today. Debt is non discriminatory. It will affect people from the apparently poorest to the richest. Yeah, no cap, man. This is the try hardest I've ever seen Paul be when collecting a debt. Huh? of people but the hey, effect is the same it, don't forget he work off commission he get a piece of this it's 45 bands it's devastating and it's going to change the life minutes later mr hawkins makes a second offer 10 grand today yeah and then 15 <clears throat> grand over okay that's no no right. we'll keep talking because that's sense yeah right do the offer 25 the car 10 and nine over 10 months i'll go on Discuss it. Mr. Hawkins' offer is £20,000 less than the £45,000 claim. But it's his final offer. Paul calls the office to check if it's acceptable to the claimant. The offer is valuing the, the BMW at six grand, ten grand as a building society check. And then £9,000 to be paid over ten months making a total of 25,000, which is final settlement of this whole issue. Okay. Can you do that? This is the first time we ever heard that, right? We ain't never heard of them try to like lower the settlement amount on the phone right now. Like I ain't, we, this is new. 15 minutes later, Paul hears back. Thank you very much. Take care, Jane. Bye. No. Okay, full, all systems go. Oh. It's acceptable, the whole thing. Half an hour later, Mr. Hawkins' father-in-law arrives to pay the £10,000. Father-in-law came in with a smile on his face, happy to help his new son-in-law out. That's tough. <clears throat> w father-in-law. With a payment plan in place, the case is resolved for now. Paul, I know it hasn't been a pleasant meeting you, but, you know. <laughs> Stranger things. Thank happened. you for saving the day. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. It's been a successful job for Paul and Steve. It started off with five, six thousand pounds for the car and ended up with 25. The success of what we do is tied up 
with the reality. I still took the car. Reality that we will not take no for an answer. Paul and Steve got the result they needed in a stressful situation. But in Stuart and Ian's next case... Now shut up! Don't tell me... Hold on. Wait now, we didn't jump too far. I'm trying to get negative. Business debt has risen by 25% in the last five years, with nearly three in five companies facing some sort of debt. It's small to medium-sized firms that face major financial hardship with money owed to suppliers, totaling 6.3 trillion pounds. A debt of less than 20,000 is enough to put a quarter of a small company's out of yeah. High Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and trainee Ian Taylor are in Stone, Staffordshire, to collect nearly four and a half thousand pounds. It's owed by Brian Hitchin, an optician, to an equipment supplier. Yes. Let's hope he's not blinded by the rip. See what I did there? Optician. Oh, yeah. Blinded. I forget. Brian, he's a dad. Okay, so that makes sense. The dad joke. It was terrible. I think that's the one there. If Mr. Hitchin can't or won't pay, the writ instructs Stuart and Ian to take it away to collect full payment or remove assets to cover the debt today good morning sir mm. uh, we're after mr hitchin yes, mr. is that yourself mr hitchin my name is mr mccracken my high court enforcement agent from direct collection and bailiffs limited been asked to execute high court writ, so yes. so at the moment sir we're to collect an outstanding balance of four thousand four hundred and seventy five pence if not, I'll have to do an inventory and have goods removed. Of course you can. Of course you can. No problem at all, sir. Okay, that's the total outstanding balance there, sir. Okay, everything's going good thus far. And there's the high court writ. Well, would you mind going out then somewhere? We won't be, sir. We'll be staying here at the moment because we have got a writ to execute. You people shouldn't be here. Well, why shouldn't we, sir? Because you haven't got any right to be here. You haven't given me any paperwork. Well, paperwork's there, sir. Paperwork's there. I've just given it. It's on the desk there. Do you want me to hand it to you? It's a CCJ, sir, that hasn't been paid, so they've transferred it to the High Court for us to come and execute. If, if you would please leave me alone. Look. So I'm staying here, sir, look, at the listen moment. Listen to me. Okay. Listen to me. Yeah. I am coming up to 83. Yeah. I can do without grief from you or anybody I'm else. I'm not giving you any grief, sir. Don't. But you need to see from our point of view, sir. I've got a writ here to execute at this address, and I've got to do that. I don't owe him any money. So I take it it's in dispute, is it? Right. He just doesn't listen. Right. He gives me a load of rubbish, and these people want banning from the world. Miss he want broke banned from the world? Go back. What did you, sir? What did you? What do you mean by that? Right. He gives me a load of rubbish and these people want banning from the world. Mr. Hitchin claims he's in dispute with the claimant. And he sends me rubbish, but it's not qualitable stuff that you can give to the public. No. All right? And he shouldn't have sent it to me either. Mr. Hitchin claims that even though the goods that he... I do. <laughs> it do, uh, the, the way we're... It sounds very that. ...was sent from the supplier was substandard, he paid the invoice and owes the company nothing. Banned from the world sounds insane. That's what I'm going to put on the thumbnail. Banned from the world with me like this. 3350, got to remember where that is. From the supplier was substandard. He paid the invoice and owes the company nothing. Nothing. But the High Court writ says otherwise. Please go away. Go away. Leave me alone. Don't look at me. Go out the back. I'm staying here, sir. Not here to cause any stress or do harm, sir. We're no, of course you're rest. not. You just don't have the brains to understand what you're doing. I don't understand, sir. I have got the brains, else I wouldn't be doing the job, sir. Well, that that is doubtful. You're there I because no, nobody else wants a job, probably. So I think you need to concentrate on the day and not about my professionality with regards to the job. Sometimes the older generation can be the trickier customers simply because they're set in their ways. They believe what they've been doing for many, many, many years is the right thing to do. You start no cap, over 50 years old, man, you're going to have a hard time even 
trying to tell somebody something about something new. You know what I'm saying? To question your authority. Or trying to tell them they don't know everything about a certain subject. See, and believe that what we are doing is incorrect. Now, I do feel sorry for the man, though. Because it's just how he's going about it. Like, it, it's like, he's fully functional. He's 83, he's at a job, but it's like, it still feels vulnerable. And we should stop what we're doing immediately because they don't agree with it. Despite the dispute with the supplier, Stuart needs to make Mr. Hitchin aware of the consequences of not paying his four and a half thousand pound debt. If we do just pay it, Mr. Hitchin. You start writing things down. It goes what to the call stage three enforcement, which means it'll go up to five thousand. Leave me alone! Sir, I'm I need to, to explain. I need to explain to you, sir. I'm trying to do this. Yeah, I understand that, sir, but I need to explain to you what we're here to do. And I don't want to laugh at this part because it's, it's, I, 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 I just don't want to. But if you see me go like this, inside I'm laughing, but I will not let y'all see it. People don't deserve to be treated like this. Mm. Do you not understand? No, I, I understand that, sir. But at, at the moment, sir, like I said, we can talk all day long. We just want to get this settled, OK, and leave you to go on with the rest of your day. Are you able to make payments, sir? Yes, I can. OK, that's fine. Now, shut up! Don't tell me to shut up, sir. There's no need to be like that, right? If you can make the I payment... Help. You don't expect to see elderly people being so emotional in this situation. It's uh, It can be quite hard, but... We've got a job to do. I shall have to ring the bank. Okay. See. Mr. Hitchin finally starts to try and raise some funds. But if he can't come up with an offer the claimant will accept... We'll have to take it away. The agents will have to remove assets from the shop. I am in a terrible mess, Debbie. Could you tell me what the balance of my account is, please? I've got, is this the amount on here, 3,200 3, and... No, no, it's 4,475. They're all crooks, these people, they, I, I, I know that they've got to make a living, but why can't they make a living out of sweeping the street, or... It's a crazy downgrade, Mr. Um... Or, or nursing elderly people. Is that all? Of the VAT hasn't been paid. The VAT? 800 and... It's not good news from the bank. Right, now the best I can do is a thousand pounds. It's not going to be enough, so we'll have to take control of goods, I'm afraid. All right. And if we do take control of goods, so it goes up to 5,534. Mr Hitchin's offer of 1,000 pounds is not even a quarter of what he owes. The agents start to make an inventory of goods. It's expensive, this stuff in here, ain't it? When Mr. Hitchin's assistant arrives. Oh, Justin, thank God you've come. I think what you're doing is indecent and wrong, no, right? Well, that's your opinion. Sir. You should give people... I should have had time to go to the court. You've had time, and I haven't. You have had time, sir. I have not okay. had time. It's in the process at the moment. You do your worst, go on. Mm. I've had it. What was my thumbnail again? I forgot already. Let me let me see. Jump cut leaves the one. What was the thumbnail? What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say, y'all? Banned from the work. Ah, yeah. Let me screenshot it. At the prospect of losing his stock, Mr. Hitchin makes a call to his son. I've got somebody who's got a high court writ out against me for um, £4,475. The best I can do towards it is £1,400. Can you help me with the rest, please? It, it won't be for very long. Don't you be a L son. 
Mr. Hitchin's son offers to help him pay off the debt. So, are you able to make payments, sir? Yes! Stop shouting, sir. Yes! Okay, have you got a debit card then? Yes! Okay. Go! Okay. How much, sir? Is All it of it. All of it. Finally, Mr. Hitchin pays off the four and a half thousand pound debt in full. Stand there. It's pen number there, please, sir. Yeah, man, I just want bro to be careful at this point, man. You getting this mad at 83? A lot can go wrong. The okay, sir. There you go. Yeah. So that's it paid in full. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time anyway, sir. Okay. It's been a stressful job for the agents. It's quite clear he's got a dispute with it. But sadly, there's a High Court writ out in his name which he has to settle. If not, then we'll have to take control of goods. That's what we were there to do today. But sadly, the job's a job, isn't it? Damage to rented properties is one of the leading causes of disputes between landlords and tenants. One in five rented properties have been subject to vandalism, with broken appliances and lack of cleanliness being the most common causes of damage. Every year in the UK, landlords lose 4.5 billion in damage to properties. High Court Enforcement Agent Steve Pinner and his son Ben are on their way to Edmonton, uh, North London, to being again. carry out an eviction. So, this morning Appreciate. we have a writ of possession against Miss Tony Robbins, and it looks like it's going to be a HMO property with multiple occupants, okay. as their address for enforcement is actually a room, oh room four. The tenant, Tony, has lived in the bedsit for 18 months. The landlord claims she owes £2,800 in mm. unpaid rent. Get he out. obtained a county court judgment to evict Tony, but escalated the case to the High Court, and she must leave today. Just off of this road somewhere on the side, isn't it? I'm not going to lie to y'all, man. If I was a landlord, immediately, the first month, first time you missed, you got to go. Okay, I'm bogus. Second time. First time I'll deal with the excuse you got to give me. As long as you pay me. But that second time around, listen, it's getting skeptical. It's not going to be an every month thing. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be an every month thing. And I'm escalating. I'm an escalator. Yeah, it's just up on the left up here somewhere. That's it. Touchdown. The landlord, mm -hmm. Christakis, also lives at the property. Oh, and I live there? I didn't even knock and it just opened. I was waiting for you, look. Are you the... I'm the landlord. Lovely to meet you, sir. My name's Ben. Hello, Ben. This is Steve. Hi, Steve. Are you also the locksmith? No, I, I, I've got some keys. Oh, right. I, I, I changed the locks. Okay. It's number four. Okay. Are they in? Yeah, they're in. Okay, okay. lovely. Just take your time. Oh, this is... Uh, this is nice. Nice. Isn't it? Yeah, it's very well done. That plant real? Good morning, madam. Right. High Court Enforcement, we have a writ to repossess this property today. This is insane. This boy, this one looks like an apartment building hallway, but it's just a room. The door, the doors is labeled and everything. See, if I put this much effort into making my house or whatever the thing is feel like a home type situation and you just rent out rooms, I want you out too. When do I have to be out by? Okay, what happens is we'll give you an hour to get your personal effects together. What, now? Yeah, which gives you... Dang, she got a baby. Yeah, but I've got nowhere else to go. Now, what you do is you take this straight to the council and then make an arrangement Emergency you can come back and collect everything else that belongs to yours. So he can't come in and take anything? He won't take anything, no. So what you do is get yourself ready. Okay. It's just hard to do much, Yeah, I understand. I really do understand that. Um, but we we'll give you, we we'll give you a bit of time to get yourself together, okay? All right. Okay. 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 Ok
right? Just get your stuff together. Just please, just don't lock the door. Tony lives in the room with her 11-month-old son, Dominic. Priority for you, you and the baby, is to be on the council's front door this morning. What, my stuff? No, no, just a suitcase for a day or so. We've got any of the big fat bags in the band? Um, there might be a couple of black bags in the band. You can have a look. Yeah, I'll have a look. Yeah. I'm going to carry a bag. Ma'am, we are trying to help. At the end of the day, get out. I understand you got a baby, but we're giving you option after. Oh, I'm not going to carry a bag plus a baby. We'll, we'll leave everything and take the baby. It's not going to change the situation that you don't want to do it. God. If you ring the council, we're going to carry a bag. Push chair. If you ring the council, tell them that we are here, High Court enforcement, with a writ, and you've now been evicted. And you got an 11th month advice. Okay. All right? Yeah. Give them a call. Okay. All right? Yeah. Ah, Crypto, welcome. Been waiting on you. <laughs> I took your advice, and donations are now active. Just saying. The agents are shocked at the smell coming from the bedsit. It stink? It stink? It smells a bit. Thing is, there's her in there, there's the baby in there, the windows are closed. Oh my god. But here's the thing. Here's the thing though. Um, with a baby, nappies, that's what y'all call them, they stink. And if you're not trying to leave the room and take it to the garbage because you're trying to avoid the landlord, you feel me? Nobody else can come and give you a hand. What about the dad? Is he local? He's working. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, That's all good. I'm just saying. I just took your advice. Wait, what happened to the baby daddy? He's working. I'm naked. All right. Uh, ever since he started making trouble for us, he had to leave. So it's made it harder for us. Right. Dang. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. Don't move nowhere to be with nobody. You know what I'm saying? If it's not in the cards at the moment, do not force it because this is what happens. When you force situations, they normally go wrong. Do you have any money to get a cab or anything? Or uh, the only money I've got today is his money. And I can spend his money on myself. No, I agree with you. Yeah. I understand. I understand this is a really hard situation and I wish I wasn't here today to put you in this situation. But we need to try and think of something. Just recently, it's always been single women with children. You have to deal with them sympathetically because at the end of the day, we are human, we have feelings, and we understand other people have feelings. So, you know, you just have to take it as it is. Disp no cap, this is how all cribs end up. They're just being used as storage at the end of the day. So, you know, you just have to take it as it is. Despite being in rent arrears, Tony claims the landlord's eviction is unfair. My test worker, Olu, asked him yeah, I... who why are you evicting Agus because of the baby? Okay, so children aren't allowed to live in a... Well, he said he could, but then he just changed his mind. Right. Oh, well, that's messed up. Tony claims that her landlord, Christakis, is evicting her because she has a baby. But he's been listening at the door. He wants Steve to hear his side of the story. Well, it's the landlord. It don't even matter. We got this high rent. It don't even matter what the side of the story is. When they came here to rent the place, the she's fat woman. So <laughs> crypto. Give me some queens for more dollars. Seems good. Crypto. Shout out to you, man, for the donor. I appreciate you. So I says to them on the tenancy agreement, he says no children. I, I didn't know she was four months pregnant, so she 
come and live here. And then when she had the baby, she says to me, I want you to evict me so I can get a council flat. I said, what? I said, evict you, but you got a baby. So she says to me, I don't care. I'm not going to give you any rent unless you give me a letter evicting me. So I gave her a letter saying no children in the house. Christakis claims that he agreed to start the eviction process as Tony requested. But after that, he claims she started to mistreat the property. She says to me, this is a shitty house. I says, my dear, if it's a shitty house, please go. She put shit in the wash basin and it was blocked. And I had my plumber here. My plumber came here about 20 times fixing that room. Okay, let's see, uh, see if we can resolve this. So you moved in, right? Check me out. Check me out. You moved in to finesse the council so you could get a council estate. You wanted the eviction paper, boom, boom. And landlord was like, all right, whatever. That's fine. Out of his pocket because eviction money costs. So he gave you the letter. Then you got to complaining? Go do what you're supposed to do. What is all of this acting about then? Oh, I don't want to do it. This is what you wanted. And listen. Please, please get it out of my house. Please. The agents are caught in the middle of a dispute. With so much ill feeling between landlord and tenant, will Stephen Ben be able to keep this eviction on track? Steve and Ben Pinner were in Edmonton, North London, carrying out an eviction. It's just hard to cook. Yeah, I understand. The tenant, Tony, had an 11-month-old son and claimed the landlord was evicting her as he didn't want children in the house. So children aren't allowed to live in there? Well, he said he could, but then he just changed his mind. But the landlord... Oh, my God, this is a recap. Come on. Now, despite the dispute, the agents must make sure that Tony leaves today. Wow. Okay, so... This isn't uh, well here at the moment. All you need to take right here, right now, is enough clothes to last you a couple of days. Well, leave my stuff here. Yeah. No chance. For the fifth time. Not with him. The problem I'm saying to you is we can't stay here all day. Oh, she's bold. Why didn't he give me notice that like you're coming today? Basically, the way it works is the county. But you just come and evict me within an hour. I'm afraid so. Mm. That's not our rules. <laughs> this is really hard, but I'm going to have to be really frank. If you have a problem trying to get your stuff back from the landlord, we will mediate. You don't even have to speak to him. Your priority is getting you and your little one to the council to get some sort of emergency accommodation. I'll leave it here. He won't let me back in to get he, it. I, I guarantee you he will. I'm trying to help you and you know, you've got, you got to meet me halfway. Mm -hmm. Steve steps in to mediate with the landlord. She is concerned that you won't let her get, get her stuff, come back another day and get her stuff. Yeah. That's not going to be an issue, is no, it? No, no, no. As long as we phone the police, when she comes here, so when she comes into my house to get the stuff, she goes out again. Oh, shit. Because I don't trust her, she would try and stay, and stay again. All right. Okay, let me just carry on. When a landlord and tenant are living in the same property, there's a lot of potentially bad tension. And all of a sudden... Was there... C oh, yeah, there is CCTV in the crib. But this is a common area, though. So, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's like... Because it's, it's, like it's like a big house, and every room is rented out to somebody and there's common areas this is a very common thing in florida as well so in the common areas where stuff can be taken and putting in the rooms and taken out and misused they put cameras and stuff we've come along and this process that's been started months ago has caused very bad blood between the two of them 30 minutes after the agents first arrived tony has called her ex-partner for help i'm being evicted now i've got an hour to get out but I don't know where I'm gonna go. I've got to carry all my stuff to the council, apparently. Right. She's lying. She's straight up lied to her. I'm getting evicted within an hour and I gotta carry all capital A L L my stuff. No. 
Just a bag for a couple days. He said that he'll call me and he'll, when he finishes the work, probably I'll come. We need to be gone for a long before one o'clock. Tony's ex-partner says he won't be coming for another two and a half hours. Ben gets on the phone to him to explain the urgency of the situation. Hello, is that Mr. Guri? Hello, are you? Hello, my, my name's Ben Pinner. I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. Are you nearby? No. OK, Tony is going to be evicted right here, right now. Yeah, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, she's my ex-partner. I, I, I know she is, but together you have a child. Yeah. And I, I want that child to be in a place of safety. And I'd also yeah. like Miss Miss Robbins to have some sort of help, because obviously she needs to go to the council. Okay, I'm coming now. Why did you need somebody to explain that to you? That is clear. This is a problem. I'm, and I know what he's going to look like when he's going to walk through this door. And I and listen, boy, you're giving us a bad rep right now, man. Take care of your kids. Your kids should be your priority. Whatever you got going on right now in this situation, it's it's not more important than your kid not have you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, go on, man, listen. With help on I can't deal with no deadbeats, man. It's one thing to not want to be with the with her, but like take care of your kid. If you gotta go to court to get Regular do that, yeah. On its way, Steve needs Tony to start packing. I think you're gonna have to start uh, getting some stuff into bags, <coughs> while you? Because otherwise, well, this I, is. I'm sorry, but I want to take out of this room. The only thing I will say to you, as long as you don't cause any damage, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. We'll leave you to do that. All right. We'll just be here. When people are more concerned about material items, it really shows that they have not got their priorities in order. I'm sure I'd put a roof over my head higher than a material item. Tony? An hour and a quarter since they arrived, Tony is packed, but there's still no sign of her ex-partner. Do you want us to help you carry it out? Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. She's also managed to find a suitcase. And these posh four wheel wheels. Tony now seems to see a positive side to the eviction. I'm not to help me because I've got him. This is what you wanted in the first place, Tony. Stop capping. God, I'm happy for getting out of this place. Like, now you have more than a room, so wherever you go, whenever they find accommodations for you, you're going to have an entire apartment. Two bedrooms. Because they got to give you one, a, a dedicated one for every child. And you only got one child, so two better. But what's to be upset about? Just as Tony is leaving, her ex Boy, she was lying. She had a suitcase and she had a walker for the baby. <laughs> hey, yo. This Partner lady wow. arrives at the property. You're Mr. Ugori. My name's Ben. I'm the High Court Enforcement Officer. You spoke to on the phone. Damn it, Mr. Yagori. But Tony is still worried about leaving her belongings in the house. When you want to get your stuff out, just ring the landlord and then. The landlord? Yes. You think he's going to let them He will let you back in. He, he will let you in. What you do is you'll call our office. I'll give you our office number. I'll put it in your phone. I'll give you it now. Tony and her son are now homeless and head off to the council. Okay. Good luck at the council. I'm sorry. This is how we met. Don't bring Mr. Yugora into the council with you. Just, you know. Bye-bye. That's woman's for you, TLO. Listen, it's not my cup of tea, but it's obviously Mr. Yugora's. The landlord, Christakis, can finally inspect his property. He hasn't been inside the bedsit for several months. Now, don't be too upset. Oh, my God. Look at the... Is it a textile? Is it block in the unit? It was a probe, probe unit. Yeah. Look at the mattress. And the, yeah, that was a brown. Oh, it actually had. It was like a little studio. It has a kitchenette. New bed. There's no toilet seats broken. All. You joking? That was a new new toilet seat. Oh my god! Look at this. Animal. Mmm. Tasty. Of course, you wouldn't live here like this. 
there was a lot of like mess. Is that food? No, I appreciate you. Yeah. Look at it, it's mold. Yeah, it's mold. Oh, dear. That's mold. Thank this you. is terrible. I've never seen people like live like this in my life. Especially with a kid in the room. Like, yeah. As bad as this is, she's gone she's holding. and it's your property here. Yeah. You can get new people in. Types. Types. These are some of the worst living conditions Steve has ever seen. Nah, that was apple juice. That was apple juice, guys. That was apple juice. It, it wasn't... It, and if it gets you some water in your system... How could you bring a child and live in this condition? It's just unbelievable, you know? The landlord, you could see he's heartbroken at the state that it's in. Well, Stuff in with care. food. In. Yeah, the place is going to be run alive with mice, probably. Yeah, I don't know. So really, I don't want to be in here too much longer. In case something bites me. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. The eviction is now complete. That's us done. <laughs> Take care. Take care, sir. Bye bye. Mm, everything got resolved this episode. I mean, that's salutable, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.